This session will cover the presentation entitled Cognitive Data Quality. Get smart about your data. My name is Tyler Wendell and I have been with SAS for around three and a half years and I am currently a software developer in R&D. I just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to watch this video and find out what are some of the innovative things we have been doing at SAS. With that, let's dive in. Cognitive Data Quality is a project aimed at infusing SAS data quality with the latest and greatest natural language processing techniques. Before I show you a demonstration of what it can do, I'm going to show you where data quality is now. Suppose you have a table that you've loaded into SAS via. Now, as you know, most tables are not as nicely named as you see right here. So let's pretend you had to run a profile on it to see what kind of content was in there. When you run a profile, part of the information you're going to get back is an ID analysis score. What that does is it tells you what it thinks the information is. Based on this one you see in the red circle, it thinks that your contact column is individual names. These tags can be used to automate various transformations with the automated suggestions engine. This is nice because you can potentially standardize and transform a large number of tables automatically. This tag was made possible by some of the functionality provided by SAS Data Quality. More specifically, identification analysis. Identification analysis takes in strings and essentially just puts a label on them. Some other data quality functionality includes gender analysis, locale guessing, parsing, data extraction, standardization, and casing. The heart of all of this functionality in the data quality engine is called the QKB, the Quality Knowledge Base. The QKB is a conglomeration of vocabularies, grammars, regular expressions, and other deterministic rules all strung together. To start supporting a new locale or a new data type, it takes a substantial amount of time and effort, and this is where cognitive data quality comes in. To keep up with demand, we started looking at modern approaches in natural language processing. We can take some of the handwritten deterministic rules in the QKB and replace them with models and other machine learning techniques. So this will start to look like this. All the functionality that we used to provide for you, just driven by models. I'm going to show you a small example of some of the identification analysis and gender analysis um, that I showed you earlier, only running through our CDQ models. Parts of this functionality are still in development. What I can demo is an interactive command line tool that we built for testing our models. The command line tool loads one of our models into CAS. The strings we interactively feed it are then pushed into CAS through the model, and then the resulting classification is printed on the screen. When this product is released, you should expect it to have one of the SAS interfaces that you are familiar with. To start the tool, I must first load the model into CAS. All right. So now it is prompting me to type in a string and that it can classify. This demo model will classify each string as one of six different identities. You will see that it will print out the likelihood it thinks it is one of those identities. For example, some generic bank. You can see the six identities here and the likelihood it thinks it is one of those identities it is very confident as an organization, and that is correct. So let's try a person. You got it right. 
You can also classify with a variety of different formats. So let's try a few other different variations of that name. It's middle initial, actual middle name. And let's abbreviate a little bit more. As you can see here, it can classify a variety of different formats. And that's going to be the case for any of these identities. What if Kathy wanted to open up her own organization? Woods LLC. Yep, classifies it as an organization. All right, let's try a few of these other identities then. Let's see what happens when we give it a phone number. It's a plain format. We could change the format a little bit. To a variety of different formats. We can also try a phone number with letters instead of numbers. Sometimes you see those in advertisements. Yep, and you can still get it right. Finally, let's try an address. Hey, simple address, and if we take the city state zip off the end, we get delivery address. Now if we abbreviate and let's change the 100 to some apartment number. You have still address. Let's try to trick it by jumbling up that a little bit and seeing if we can still get it. So it's still probably if a human is reading that, apartment A. If we take the apartment A off, we're back to an individual, Dr. Carmen. The next thing I want to show you guys is a gender analysis model. So let's go ahead and load it up into CAS. A gender analysis model should be able to guess the gender of a name given to it. The first name I want to try is Antonio Alvarez. And it got it right. Awesome. Let's try a different male name and then we'll, we'll switch it up a little bit. Where the opportunity to confuse the model and have the model get it wrong is going to be in situations where a person might have two first names, one of each gender. For example, Susan John, first name Susan, last name John. Obviously John is a very common uh, male first name, but it can also be a last name. So let's see how it handles it. That's great, our model figured it out. But let's switch it again. What this means is that the model has picked up on positional information. And not only is it learning which names are male names and which names are female names, but the position of the names matter to determine the gender. Let's continue to challenge the model and try to confuse it. But let's keep the same names in their position, but change the format so that it is actually a female name. And look at that, I think that's so cool. Figured it out. It's not only figuring out positions, names, but also formats. I just wanna try a couple more things uh, to confuse the model. First one, let's try a prefix. Well, let's make it weird. Let's go uh, old school Johnny Cash, a boy named Sue. Let's pretend we actually do have a a uh, man named Susan. So we'd probably address this man as Mr. Susan. So let's try this. All right, well, it did pick up that Mr. Susan is a man. That is good. But the last thing I want to try is a gender neutral title, a prefix, 
Dr. Susan. Dr. Susan John should probably come out as a female unless it has some bias in it. So let's check our model for that. I am so glad that that model guessed it correctly. This will conclude the demonstration. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. I wish we could have done this in person, hopefully next year. But while you're on the SAS website, please go and check out other demonstrations and other videos to see how we're innovating. Thanks again.